What's up, guys? This is Derek Kirby back with another adaptation of an article I've written for Blogging the Boys. This one released Saturday afternoon, so you may have already seen it. Weekends are kind of hard for me to turn around videos just with the family and kiddo and everything. But we're nevertheless going to take a look at Anthony Brown today. He is the senior most cornerback on this Cowboys roster, and his versatility, that being his ability to play inside or out, has always kind of kept him reasonably valuable to this team. But this is a situation where, with a new defensive coordinator who is prioritizing a new mold of cornerbacks, these bigger cornerbacks than we've seen traditionally from the Cowboys, and this new crop of young players coming up, Anthony Brown's roster spot might not be as sure of a thing as it has been in the past. Now, allow me to explain this here. Anthony Brown, before last season, signed a new three-year deal that seemed like it kept him pretty well in place. He's owed over $5 million this season, which compared to other guys in his situation, Maurice Kennedy is on a one-year deal that pays him far less than that. Uh, Jordan Lewis, another guy that plays out of the slot, also before this year got a three-year deal, which was a little bit surprising. So you could see how money could sort of play the politics there to keep these guys in place. But the main thing is, is it a lot of money that you're talking about? Not really. This isn't a, a high investment where you're like, well, we're paying this guy $10 million, so it doesn't matter if this other player is pushing him for a roster spot. If it's somewhat comparable, we're going to go with the guy that we're owe, owing all this money to, the guy that we're on the hook for to pay X amount of dollars anyway this year. So Anthony Brown has struggled at times, not just in camp, but really the past couple of years. He's been on the Cowboys fan base's chopping block for some time. And it's understandable he's had his struggles over the past two years. He's missed, I want to say, 13 games, which is not a little bit. That's a significant chunk. Yeah, 13 games. And you're having a situation now where these young guys are coming up, right? Where you're talking about Kelvin Joseph out of Kentucky, whether you're talking about Nashawn Wright, who, by the way, you want to talk about the new mold of the Cowboys cornerback room. Nashawn Wright is six foot four. Now, when the Cowboys took Nashawn Wright, a lot of people kind of gawked at that. It felt like a reach, despite the fact that the kid has four, uh, four, four, seven speed and a 33 inch arm length. That is significant. However, he's still a guy who doesn't have the most fluid hips and is a little bit of a project. And because of that, he was actually uh, graded to be a seventh round prospect. And Dallas took him much earlier than that. They took him with the 99th overall pick. Certainly farther. People thought it was a reach. But you know what? Wright is having a good camp. He's having a really good camp camp teams are trying to throw at him trying to target him despite his size because they know of some of those mechanical issues and things like that the the areas in which he was a rough prospect coming out but he is absolutely having a strong camp i would say of the young kids coming through he joseph has been very strong too but joseph did have some struggles in this past game against the cardinals back to back bad plays, uh, gave up a catch on one and had a bad penalty on the other. But Wright has been very, very solid for the Cowboys. So you have these young guys coming through that are pushing at Anthony Brown a little bit. You also had the fact that when camp started, Anthony Brown was starting outside opposite Trayvon Diggs in the outside corner spot with Jordan Lewis playing in the slot. But then Jordan Lewis injured his hamstring and in came veteran Maurice Kennedy. Kennedy has been sensational for the Cowboys. Not just that interception of Matthew Stafford in the live scrimmage against the Rams, but really just making plays all throughout camp. He's been an athletic freak throughout camp and shows an, an amazing degree of body control and technique. If you recall, he sat out the entire 2020 season because of the... Um, you know, the COVID thing, he opted to sit out that season and he signed with the Cowboys on a one year deal. And it looks really likely that he will end up being the starting, in this case, slot corner for the Cowboys. And that 
takes away some of that versatility, at least some of the edge for Anthony Brown, because Anthony Brown, yeah, he's only 27 years old, but he has the most experience in the Cowboys defensive locker room. This is his sixth season, yet his struggles tied with how much more he's making than any of the other corners in this regard really, really raise questions about it. If you're not going to start him anyway, does it really make sense to keep his roster spot and pay him all that money just to be a reserve? I don't know at this point because I think if you're if you feel it's close enough between him and Joseph or him and I, I don't think Nation Wright is ready to be a starter yet. He's had a damn good camp, but I do think you're going to need a little more time. And frankly, you'll need it for Joseph as well. But if you feel as the Cowboys coaches, if you feel that this is close enough to a push, then the issues you have elsewhere, such as the depth at offensive line, probably need more attention. And you could save up a little bit of that. You could address that and save some money by either trading Brown, which if you're doing it, let's be clear, you're not getting much. You're talking about a sixth or seventh round pick or something like that in exchange. You're not getting any kind of relief there. It's more so about just opening up the roster spot. But if you trade him, obviously, then you're passing off the money he's owed. So that would be preferable. But you could have a situation where he's getting cut instead, which I think would be a little bit more of a long shot. But you have that scenario as well that could open up where you're basically saying to the young bucks, hey, go run. We understand you're going to have some growing pains, but we trust in this offense and we trust in the defense overall that we're building, especially that defensive line and the pressure that they're putting on. We're going to give you a little bit of room to grow because Brown doesn't make sense when you have other pressing needs for a team that is very talented. You need to address those pressing needs. But Brown doesn't make sense to pay the money that you're going to pay him if he's just going to sit on the bench. If he can't start outside or in, and Kennedy certainly puts pressure on him on starting inside. Jordan Lewis, that could be a, another chopping block guy. You're obviously not going to cut both of them. But if you have a situation where Jordan Lewis, you know, he might have just gotten paid, but it's not like he's getting paid big money. It's not as big as Anthony Brown got paid. So you could see a scenario wherein Anthony Brown opts to, or not opts to, but where Anthony Brown still makes the team in a reserve role or a splitting time with Kennedy and Jordan Lewis gets cut instead. And if the hamstring doesn't get right, then I could see that being the case. But I think Anthony Brown, he's been divisive. His versatility has helped him. He's been adequate to good at different times of his career, working inside or out. They obviously, by putting him outside, seem to have expectations for that to be his role. But his struggles at times in camp, whether it was the Pro Football Hall of Fame game against Pittsburgh or just other times, have kind of raised some concerns. Yes, you're having imperfect days as well by the rookies, Wright and Joseph, but they are flashing. And you're not really seeing flashes from Brown. I would say Kennedy's probably of the defensive backs had the best camp overall. And that's saying something because Diggs is a very good corner as well. But I don't know. We'll have to see what ends up happening with it. But my gut feeling is that Anthony Brown probably still likely to make the team. If I had to give it a percentage likelihood, like a chance that he makes the team, I would say I'm probably 65% certain he'll still be on the roster. But the fact that it's even that low really shows that there is there is pressure finally coming from within the club in terms of talent coming up and pressing him for what was in the past just a guaranteed role. Like, we don't have a better option to put out there. And he is pretty good, if not good enough, for us to justify putting him in there. So you take the full picture, the last two years missing 13 total games, the, the contract that he's getting now, the money he's owed, and the fact that he's getting pushed by much cheaper options on the roster to the point where he might not even start despite having positional flexibility, that kind of changes the picture a little bit. All things to consider, but let me know. What do you think? Is Anthony Brown likely to still start for this team? Is he, do you think, likely to remain a Cowboy this season? Or will he be a camp cap casualty? I guess you wouldn't be a cap casualty, but a camp casualty 
in that regard, a veteran that comes in and is a little bit of a surprising cut considering what we thought going into camp. Let me know in the comments, but that's all my time for this video. If you haven't already, drop a like, leave a comment below, subscribe to The Dallas Prospect. Do not forget to check out my work over at Blogging the Boys. I write four articles per week, and I am going to be kicking off a new, basically weekly series for their YouTube channel as well. I'm doing podcasting and YouTube videos with them as well, so be sure to check that out for more Cowboys content and news. It is a fantastic website, a fantastic resource for Cow Cowboys fans. And uh, look for more of these adaptations. My plan is to do adaptations of all of these videos, or sorry, all of these articles that I'm writing. And for members, I'm probably going to set it up where I actually kick those out a day earlier than I do for the rest of the for the rest of the community here. So a little bit of bonus there for you if you want to sign up and be a member or a patron. Let me know. But until next time, guys, remember. Every legend was once a prospect. Peace!